I am Jackie Parch, and I work in the School Corps program at Multnomah County Library doing outreach to K-12 schools. Um, and my coworkers are going to introduce themselves as we go along today. Um, and welcome to Gotta Read This, New Books to Connect with Your Curriculum for K-5 Educators. This is part two um, of this workshop. We did part one um, on Tuesday. So we're going to begin with a land acknowledgement, and this one is courtesy of Portland State University. We acknowledge that the lands we are on are the historic homelands of several bands of Chinook-speaking people, including many Multnomah, Clackamas, and Watlata Cascade villages. There are also Kalapuya, Tualatin villages nearby, and the Malala people in the Willamette Valley. Today, their descendants are primarily members of the Grand Ronde and Siletz Confederated Tribes, with Chinook and other tribal relations at Warm Springs, Yakima, and the Chinook Nation. A number of Native American individuals and groups own land in Multnomah County on modern terms. Multnomah County is unceded Indian land and in this sense remains contestable space. In addition to the federally recognized tribes located primarily in the state of Oregon, we acknowledge the presence of numerous unrecognized tribes and indigenous groups whose stories also demand our attention. So um, in today's webinar, we're gonna be covering books about the arts, US history, math, health and guidance, and science. And um, in the workshop earlier this week, we covered language arts, geography and multicultural studies, government, politics, and social justice, world history, and community. <clears throat> and if you missed the earlier webinar, you'll be able to find it soon um, on the library's YouTube channel, and the recording of this webinar will be posted there as well. Um, this is a screenshot of the YouTube channel, and <clears throat> if you do a search in the lower search box down here, which just searches the library's YouTube channel. If you search for Gotta Read This, that's the way to find um, these webinars when they are uploaded. Um, you also might be interested in the recording of the presentation that we did last week called Talking Equity and Social Justice, and that one will be posted on YouTube soon as well. Um, we also are working um, with a service called Niche Academy this year to be able to post some of our webinars so um, you can watch them not live. You can watch them after the fact and be able to get our certificate of attendance. So we'll send you some more information about that after the webinar. Soon we're also going to finish our novelties videos for educators, parents, and kids. These feature recent discussable fiction for grades four through eight. And when you fill out the evaluation at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to request to be notified when those videos are available if you're interested. If you have any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A, um, not in the chat, so that we can compile them. We'll do some Q&A after we're done with the book talks. Um, and we're also going to be sharing some links in the chat. Um, but if you miss those as they go by in the chat, don't worry, because we'll be sending them to you in your follow up email after the webinar. Please think of this presentation as a teaser for what school core librarians can do for educators and what the library can do for this community. To use school core services, you need to live or work in Multnomah County, the tax base that funds us, although anyone can look at the book list we've already made on our website. Multnomah County educators, if you'd like lists of books and websites for your students on these or other topics, um, we are sharing the link in the chat to our school core menu of services. And for parents and homeschooling families, the library's My Librarian service can help you find what you need. Our Library Connect service is available to most school districts in Multnomah County. It lets students use their school ID number as a Multnomah County library card number. Students can access the same resources as other library card holders without having to carry a separate library card with them. And next week, we have some webinars about Library Connect. Um, so we're going to post the link in the chat where you can go to sign up for those if you would like to. The books that we're featuring today are ones that were published in 2021 and early 2022. We chose the books based on awards, starred reviews, 
and the relation to the curriculum of our local school districts. This workshop is for educators of grades K through five, but if you also work with middle or high school students, we'll be creating book lists of titles for those grade levels too. This is something you can also request when you fill out the evaluation at the end of the webinar. Um, we are gonna be sharing the link to the book list for this webinar in the chat section. Um, one thing to know is that it's the same list um, from the first half um, of this webinar that was on Tuesday. So we'll be beginning about halfway down the list with the art section. Um, on the list, we have included the author and title of each book and applicable standards for each section. We also included a range of grade levels with which the book could be used. We specified a wide span, knowing that sometimes a book could be read out loud to younger children or read independently by older students. And please fill out the survey as you leave the webinar. Um, you'll need to do that to request a certificate as proof of attendance. And at the end, we'll post the link to that survey in the chat. But if you have any difficulties getting to it from the chat, um, we'll also send it to you in your follow-up email. And that email will also include all the links that we've been putting in the chat, um, as well as the link to the library's YouTube channel, where you'll be able to find the recordings. And now I'm going to turn things over to my coworker, Lael, um, who's going to be talking about the arts. Awesome, thank you, Jackie. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lael Tate. Um, I work on School Corps as the Indigenous Program Specialist, and I'm going to be sharing some books about the arts with you. Okay. So our first book is Make Meatballs Sing, The Life and Art of Karita Kent, written by Matthew Burgess, and this is for grades one through four. Make Meatball Sing is about award-winning screen print artist, Krita Kent, with bright, bold illustrations that draw inspiration from Kent's own art and artwork style. Readers will learn about Kent's childhood, her time as a nun, and her time as a university professor. Kent made significant contributions to how people think about and teach art, and readers will be inspired by her creative approach to the art-making process. King of Ragtime, The Story of Scott Joplin by Stephen Costanza, grades one through four. This book is about the life and childhood of Scott Joplin, the creator of ragtime music. It tells about how he got his start as a little boy, playing the piano at the big house his mom worked in, how his parents saved up money to give him piano lessons, and how he traveled the country playing his music in saloons. Eventually, Joplin's hit song, Maple Leaf Fig, allowed him to fully commit to being a composer and spend his life doing what he truly loved. Shaped by Her Hands, Potter Maria Martinez, written by Anna Harbour Freeman, grades K, grades K through three. Growing up, Maria Martinez was surrounded by clay and she was curious about making pottery. Her aunt was a skilled potter and taught Maria how her Tewa ancestors had been making pottery for centuries by gathering clay and finishing the pots in fire. As Maria got older and honed her skills, she became well known in her community and eventually nationwide for her fine pottery. Sonny Rollins Plays the Bridge by Gary Golio grades two through five. Sonny Rollins is one of the most famous jazz saxophonists, but early on in his career, when he was playing with the greats, he walked away from fame. He felt that he needed to get back to his music and focus on his skills rather than being famous. So he decided to practice playing his music on the Williamsburg Bridge. This book is written in lyrical text with flowing colors and helpful information at the back. We Can, Portraits of Power, written and illustrated by Tyler Gordon, grades K through three. This book is a collection of portraits created by 15-year-old artist, T 
Tyler Gordon. When Tyler was a child, he was bullied because he had a stutter and he found that art was an outlet that allowed him to express himself. Each portrait in this book is of a person who has inspired or impacted Tyler in some way and is accompanied with his own description of their life and their impact on him. Mambo Mucho Mambo, The Dance That Crossed Color Lines by Dean Robbins, grades two through four. This is the true story of the invention of Latin jazz and the creation of the mambo dance style with descriptive words that explain and illustrate dance moves and the sound of music. This book tells a powerful story of challenging segregation through dance and art. Unbound, The Life and Art of Judith Scott, written by Joyce Scott, grades two through four. This book is about the life of fiber arts artist, Judith Scott, who had Down syndrome. It follows her relationship with her sister, her experience in a mental institution, and how she developed her love of working with natural material and found objects to become a renowned artist. Readers will love the bright colors and incorporation of images of found objects and materials in the illustrations. Song for Jimmy, the story of guitar legend, Jimi Hendrix by Charles R. Smith, grades two through six. This book tells the story of Jimi Hendrix from his tumultuous childhood where his parents fought and he lived the blues to his teenage years learning to play the guitar to his tours in Europe. The bright illustrations and moving text bring Hendrix's life and music off the page. Nina, a story of Nina Simone. This uh, by Tracy Todd, grades K through five. This book follows the life of legendary artist Nina Simone from her childhood in North Carolina to her career as a musician and singer. It highlights the role that her voice and her music played in the civil rights movement and how she used her platform to stand up for justice. Stunning illustrations propel the narrative forward. Opposites Abstract by Mo Willems, grades one and up. Opposites Abstract might seem like a simple book with minimal words, but the illustrations and art make readers, make readers think. What is the opposite of intentional and how does one draw that? Mo Willems lets readers explore different artistic concepts through illustrations in this book. A Boy, a Boy Named Isamu, A Story of Isamu Naguchi by James Yang, grades one through three. This book is about sculptor and artist Isamu Naguchi. James Yang imagines what Naguchi experienced as a child as he drew his artistic inspiration from nature and his experiences growing up. This book gives readers a glimpse into how Naguchi may have seen the world as a child and how that shaped his art as an adult. And with that, I am going to pass it to Tanya. Thank you, Elle. Hello, everyone. My name is Tanya. I am a librarian with School Corps. I'm a um, bilingual librarian, so I um, speak English and Spanish. And I will be sharing my screens here shortly. Okay, so I'll be sharing books about U.S. history. Um, so the first one is Papa's Free Day Party by Marilyn Nelson, illustrated by Wayne Anthony Still, grades kinder through third. It's 1924, and curious grandchildren are getting ready for bed, and they ask Grandpa when is his birthday. And Grandpa explains he doesn't know. The kids are puzzled. How could someone not know their birthday? Grandpa explains that back when he was born, hardly anyone kept track, kept track of the birthdays of Black people. All he knows is that he was born one or two years after freedom came to those enslaved in 1865. 
Grandpa goes on to tell them his story of survival as a little boy who had to flee to the north when the Ku Klux Klan came to burn his family's house. The children decide to celebrate Grandpa's birthday, but since they don't know his actual birthday, they call it his free day party. The story is inspired by the author's own family history. And afterward, um, that includes photographs, um, shares the author's family's story and their reconnection with the white family that took their grandfather in. Your Legacy, a Bold Reimagining of Our Enslaved History by Shelley Williams, grades kinder through second. Your Legacy is a powerful book about Black history in America. The author writes to young Black readers affirming the bravery, love, ingenuity, and strength of their ancestors. The book starts in Africa and follows enslaved Africans from their homelands to America, highlighting their courageousness and determination. The book also incorporates facts about different Black historical figures inventors, artists, and scientists. A Day for Remembering, inspired by the true events of the first Memorial Day by Leah Henderson, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day, and it was established to honor those who gave their lives in the Civil War. Later, the holiday evolved to include those who died in combat in different wars. This is the story told through the eyes of a child of the first Memorial Day. His newly um, free black community comes together and works hard to commemorate the lives of the soldiers who gave their lives so that all could be free. An author's notes, info about decor Decoration Day, a timeline notes, and a bibliography offer readers additional context around the subject matter. I Am an American, the, story, the Wong Kim Ark Story by Martha Brokenborough with Grace Lynn, illustrated by Julia, Julia Cool, grades one through four. Wong was born in San Francisco to Chinese immigrant parents in 1873. He always knew he was an American, an American, even when his family and community were targets of mistreatment, violence, and injustice. When Wong was a teenager, his parents chose to move back to China. The inhumane treatment they experienced in the United States became insufferable. Wong chose to stay in the U.S., and um, the second time that he visited his family, the Customs detained him on his return and claimed that he was not a U.S. citizen because of his ancestry. Wong um, took his case to the Supreme Court. Thanks to Wong's um, convictions of what is an American, anyone born in the U.S. or its territories is considered an American by law. The Fearless Flights of Hazel Ying Lee by Julie Lung, illustrated by Julie Kwong, grades one through four. Hazel was an unafraid and adventurous young woman from the time she took her first flight, she was hooked. She worked on uh, uh, one of the few jobs Chinese women were allowed to do in the 1930s. She was an elevator operator. She saved her money and in a year, she was able to earn her pilot's license. She couldn't really do anything with her pilot's license since no one would hire a Chinese pilot, but soon an opportunity opened up. With the attack on Pearl Harbor, Harbor all male pilots were sent to war. The Air Force developed a team known as the Women Air Force Service pilot, Pilots, or WASPs, who tested airplanes right off of the assembly line. It was dangerous work. Hazel had a close call once, um, but in 1944, there was a radio tower error that killed Hazel. Because um, the Air Force considered her a civilian, she did not receive a military funeral and her family could not bury her 
and the spot they chose for her because it was a whites only cemetery. Hazel's family fought and even wrote to the president. Opening the Road, Victor Hugo Green and His Green Book by Kayla V. Dawson, illustrated by Eliana Harris, grades two to four. Victor Hugo Green loved to take road trips, but it was challenging to be a black traveler back when laws made it legal to segregate and deny people service based on the color of their skin. Black travelers could be denied service at any restaurant, gasoline station, hotel, or bathroom. Even if they got in an accident, the ambulance and or nearby hospital could deny black travelers um, life-saving assistance. They also risked um, the threat of violence and intimidation if they happened to drive through a predominantly white community, particularly at night. Victor Hugo came up with the idea of creating the Green Book to offer Black motorists information about where they were safe and welcome when traveling. This is the true story of Victor Hugo, the Green Book, and why it was needed. The authors note a timeline and a bibliography offer readers more in-depth information. Harris also reminds us that traveling is easier for Black Americans, but it still isn't always safe. Because of this, new versions of the Green Book are being created today. Moving forward from space age rides to civil rights sit-ins with Airman Alton Yates by Chris Barton, illustrated by Steffi Walt, grades two to four. When Alton Yates was a kid, he dreamed of serving in the Air Force, even though he saw that black soldiers were not treated with the same honor and respect as white soldiers. When Alton was finally able to join, he put his body through tremendous hardship as he served with a team that was experimenting the limits of the body in flight, high altitudes and enormous speeds. When Alton was done serving in the Air Force, he took his car across the US to get home. Many restaurants and gas stations would not serve him because of his skin color. This fueled Alton to uh, be a warrior against segregation. He became a leader in the civil rights movement and organized sit-ins where black activists sat at lunch counters that would not serve them because of their skin color. It was a form of protest. Um, one of the sit-ins sit organized by Alton turned deadly when white men gathered, um, gathered with access, access to confront and, um, and conf to confront the sit-in protesters. Um, this uh, is known as the Axe Handle Saturday. Back matter includes a timeline author and illustrated illustrator notes and additional sources. Seeking Freedom, the unt untold stories of the Fortress Monroe and the ending of slavery in America by Celine Castrovilla, illustrated by E.B. Lewis, grades two to five. In May of 1861, George Scott was living in the wilderness. His home was a dark cave, but it was better than being enslaved. George kept to the shadows of the near, nearby town of Hampton, Virginia, to hear the latest information about the Civil War. He had to be careful because if he was captured, he could be um, enslaved and forced to work um, to support the war effort on the Confederate side. While in town, George overheard that a nearby Union fort was providing refuge for freedom seekers. He went to the fort seeking refuge along with many others. Upon entering the forts, the freedom seekers were questioned to get intel on the Confederacy's movements. When Major General Butler found that George had plenty of knowledge of the nearby wilderness and had seen Confederate soldiers, he asked George to spy on the Union's behalf to gain the military advantage. George successfully did so, and his efforts contributed contributed to the end of slavery in the United States. 
additional information about the true story of Fortress Monroe, the people who helped the enslaved, a bibliography and the Fort Monroe National Monument are included in the back matter. The People Remember by E.B. Savoy, illustrated by Lovis Weiss, um, grades two, two to five. Using free verse, colorful artwork, and the seven principles of Kwanzaa, Savoy and Wise move readers through time, sharing the beauty, love, and resilience of the African diaspora. Um, the story begins in West Africa and moves through many um, historical struggles, long suffered victories, highlighting leaders, artists, and creatives along the way until present day. The words the people remember, um, it happens again and again, appear throughout the story, reminding readers that injustice and racism have been and continue to be a part of the Black experience, of the Black experience. If you lived during the Plymouth Thanksgiving by Chris Newell, illustrated by Winona Nelson, grades two to five. Laid out in question and answer format, easy to understand text and colorful artwork scattered throughout, this book offers a comprehensive and honest account of the Wampanoag and their interactions and dealings with the colonist, including what really happened at the, at the feast in Plymouth in 1621. Not only does the book cover truths about American history, it also connects how these historical events continue to impact people's lives, particular, particularly Indigenous people today. The 1619 Project, Born on the Water, by Nicole Hannah Jones and Renee Watson, uh, grade two to five, grades two to five. Um, the 1619 project, Born on the Water, is a powerful and moving story told from the perspective of a grandmother uh, to her granddaughter about the history of African people who were kidnapped from their homelands and enslaved in America. The little girl in the story is curious about where her family is from. Her grandma tells her uh, their ancestors were born on the water. They came from the people who survived the Middle Passage, who survived enslavement, and who survived the violence of America. This book is a story of hope and resilience. The American Colonies Asking Tough Questions by Jennifer Kau, grades four to five. Frank and straightforward responses to thought-provoking questions like, was the new world really new? How did colonists and native nations treat each other? And how did the colonies change America? Offer readers a realistic and factual understanding of the people and events that brought about the American colonies and how these historical events shape our current reality. Without separation, pre pre prejudice, segregation, and the case of Robert, Roberto Alvarez by Larry Dane Bremer, illustrated by Maya Gonzalez, grades four to six. After winter break, uh, Roberto, along with other children in his San Diego community, made their way back to school. To the surprise of the um, brown kids, the principal let them know that they needed to attend the Mexican school. Many of the children uh, went back home and their families refused to send them to the new school. The district's um, board of trustees claimed that the new Mexican school was for the student's own good. Um, there they would be taught English and American customs, which was not true. In reality, what led to the decision for this um, separate Mexican school were complaints from the White Parent Teacher Association that claimed that the Brown students were holding back their children and that their, um, that, um, their uncleanliness, uncleanliness was a health hazard. Um, Roberto's family knew this was unjust because Roberto was an, Ameri an American. He and the brown kids from his community deserve the same level of education as the white students. 
Um, they sought legal representation and took the case all the way to the Superior Court of California. Um, back matter includes author's notes, photographs, and sources consulted by the author. Why Longfellow Lied, The Truth of Paul Revere's Midnight Ride, Ride by Jeff Lantos, grades fifth grade and up. Um, Paul Revere has long been regarded as a hero in the history books. Uh, Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride, helped memorialize Revere. Uh, but did, did you know that the poem contains many inaccuracies? Lantos helps uh, break down Longfellow's poem, bringing to light a true account of Paul Revere's ride and uncovers why the facts were twisted many years after on the verge of the Civil War. Readers gain an understanding of how historical events can be used to influence future events. Crazy Horse and Custer Born Enemies by S.D. Nelson, grades fifth grade and up. Laid out in the side-to-side -side format, this is a double biography of two men who changed Lakota and U.S. history forever. Crazy Horse was a Lakota chief who became known as a great, as a great warrior as he helped win battles with other tribes. Custer became famous for his unrelenting, unrelenting leadership um, during the Civil War. The two couldn't be more different, yet they did have some things in common. Without villainizing either, Nelson follows both men from early childhood to their final battle, including what day-to-day -day life was like and significant events in their lives. Through their bio biographical accounts, readers can gain an understanding of the time period and the historical events that took place. Historic photos, paintings, drawings, and quotes tell the stories and tell their stories in rich detail. Back matter includes the author's notes, art notes, a timeline, a bibliography, art credits, an index, and more. Stamped for Kids, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi, um, fourth through seventh grade. Professor historic Professor, historian, and anti-racist scholar Ibram X. Kendi partnered with Jason Reynolds, the cool and popular YA and middle grade author, to write this bold, candid, and approachable book geared towards um, young readers seeking to understand racism from its very beginnings to its present. Reynolds and Ken Kendi carefully and thoughtfully explain um, where racist ideas come from, how our racist past is mixed with the present, significant figures who fought racism with anti-racism, and what it means to be an anti-racist. The book includes a timeline of key moments in American history, a glossary, and suggestions for further reading. And now I will pass it on to Jackie. All right, thank you. Let me share my screen again. All right, we have a very short section here of math books that has just two titles in it. Room for Everyone by Nas Khan, illustrated by Mercy Lopez, grades pre-K through one. Musa and his sister hop into the Dala Dala for the trip to the beach, but it soon makes a stop to pick up an old man with his bike. Musa wonders if there's room on the crowded minibus, but his sister assures him, don't worry, Musa, there's space galore. If you move just a bit, we can make room for more. Soon the bus stops again for a herder with two goats and then three vendors with baskets of fruit. Will they ever get to the beach? This counting story is set in Zanzibar and will elicit lots of giggles as more and more creatures fit into the Dala Dala. Miriam's Magic, the story of mathematician Miriam Mirzakani by Megan Reed, illustrated by Aaliyah Jalil, grades K through three. When Miriam Mirzakani was a child, she loved telling stories and drawing the fantastic worlds her mind had created. In school, she mostly daydreamed in math class until she started learning geometry, where numbers could become shapes, each with their own story. Miriam grew up to become a mathematician who invented new formulas to solve some of math's toughest puzzles, 
She was also the first woman to win a Fields Medal, mathematics highest award. And now I'll turn things back over to Lael. Awesome, thank you, Jackie. All right, let's share. All right, so I am going to talk about some books about health and guidance. Lakshmi's Mooch by Shelley Anand, grade, grades one through three. One day, Lakshmi's classmate tells her she looks like a cat because she has hair above her lip. Lakshmi is devastated and starts noticing hair all over her body. I thought hair was just for your head, she thought to herself. But Lakshmi's mom explains that the little hairs above her lip are called her mooch, the Hindi word for mustache, and many women in their family have one. Your hair isn't a problem, says her mom. It's soft and it keeps you warm. Soon, Lakshmi is back in school showing off her mooch. This sweet story is about self-love and, and the diversity of bodies. Milo Imagines the World by Matt De La Pena, grades K through three. Milo and his sister get on the subway for a long ride. As they move from stop to stop, Milo imagines the lives of the people around him. Where is the man with the crossword puzzle going and the woman with the wedding dress? By the end of the book, readers learn that Milo is going to visit his mom in prison and that maybe some of the assumptions he made about people on the train aren't entirely true. This is a beautiful and imaginative story about love, community, and expectations. Bodies Are Cool by Tyler Fetter, grades pre-K through three. With bright moving illustrations and flowing verse, Bodies Are Cool shares a message of self-love and body positivity to young readers that will be sure to be enjoyed by adults as well. This book celebrates the diversity of bodies from skin, skin color to size to disabilities and shares the beauty in being unique. Young readers are sure to love exploring the full colorful illustrations. The Big Bad Wolf in My House by Valerie Fontaine, grades pre-K through four. This book is about a young girl and her mom and the big bad wolf that moves into their house. In this book, the big bad wolf is a metaphor for an abusive partner. And this story shows the fear the little girl and her mom experience as a wolf continuously disrupts their life. This book handled an intense subject in a gentle, an honest manner and ends on a hopeful note. My Thoughts Are Clouds, Poems for Mindfulness by Georgia Hurd, grades two through five. My Thoughts Are Clouds is a collection of poetry to help young readers be more mindful and process different thoughts and emotions that they might be feeling. This book frames emotions like weather and teaches concepts such as deep breathing and meditation in an easy to understand format. You Ruined It by Anastasia Higginbotham, grades four through eight. You Ruined It is about a young girl and how she grapples with the aftermath of being sexually assaulted by her older cousin. It handles the confusion, fear, hurt, and betrayal that she feels. It shows how she tells her mom and sister and how they also handle that information. This book handles this complex and heavy topic with care and holds space for children to learn about this topic in a gentle but honest way. The girl shares her feelings openly, her anger and confusion and shame. It handles responses to trauma like disassociation and nausea, and it shows a path towards healing with trusted family and community. It is an intense book, but the complex collaged illustrations and pastel colors create a safe space for children and adults to approach this topic. The book includes tips for grounding oneself while reading the story and is followed by questions for discussion and thought. Jacob's School Play, starring he, she, and they. 
by Ian Hoffman, grades K through three. Jacob's school play introduces readers to gender identity, expression, and pronouns. In the story, some students are confused about Jacob using they them pronouns, but with help from the teacher and through conversation, the class learns about different pronouns and being respectful. Oh. Um, Puberty is Gross, but also Really Awesome by Gina Loveless, grades five and up. With clear illustrations, humor, and straightforward writing, this book introduces readers to different aspects of puberty, from menstruation and body hair to identity and relationships. This book stands out from other books about puberty because it, was, it is written inclusively, using language like assigned female or male at birth. Our skin. A first conversation about race by Megan Madison and Jessica Raleigh, grades pre-K through one. Our skin introduces topics like skin color, race, and the history of racism to young children. It tells this complex story in an easy to understand format with bright colors and clear words. It introduces skin color and racism as topics that are not too complicated for children to learn about at a young age. Yes, no, a first conversation about consent by Megan Madison and Jessica Raleigh as well. Grades pre-K through one. Um, with clear language and simple illustrations, young readers can learn about consent, bodily autonomy, asking for permission, and how to say and accept no. In this book from the creators of Our Skin, A First Conversation About Race. Not Little by Maya Myers, grades pre-K through two. Dot hates it when people comment on how small she is. She is not little, she insists. One day, when the mean boy is picking on a new kid at lunch, Dot stands up to him and proves that she is not little at all. In fact, she has a big voice, a big voice and big opinions, and that is good enough for her. Beautifully Me by Nabella Noor, grades pre-K through two. Zuby is so excited for the first day of school and feels certain it is going to be a great day. She puts on her favorite blue overalls and lucky butterfly clips. But then she starts hearing comments from her family that don't make her feel so good. Her mom complains about her belly while looking in the mirror. Her older sister says that she needs to go on a diet to look pretty and some kids at recess make fun of someone for being fat. Zuby wonders, am I not beautiful the way that I am? This book is a lovely story about self-love and body positivity. Zuby learns that she is beautiful just the way she is. Born Ready, the true story of a boy named Penelope by Jody Patterson, grades pre-K through, or grades K through two. Penelope doesn't like it when people treat him like a girl or call him cute. Even though other people might think he is a girl, Penelope knows he is a boy. This book is about how Penelope tells his family and friends that he is a boy and how he explores that identity with the support of the people that he loves. A Sky Blue Bench by Bar Baram Rahman, grades K through two. Aria is nervous to go back to school because her leg was injured in an accident and her school doesn't have any chairs or desks and it hurts for her to sit on the floor. She comes up with a plan to build a bench and eventually gets the help of her whole class. In the author's note, the author shares that they wrote this book to honor the resilience of Afghan children, many who have been injured like Aria from bombs. What I Am by Divya Srinivasan, grades pre-K through two. This sweet story answers the question that many kids of color get asked from a young age. What are you? The little girl in this book shares that she is many things. She is a daughter, she's brave, she dances, she enjoys parties, and she's Indian American. All these things make her who she is. 
This is a great story to help kids understand their identities and turn the invasive what are you question on its head. A Walk in the Words by Hudson Talbot, grades one through three. A Walk in the Words is about a young boy who is struggling to read. He misses the pictures in his books and feels pressured and embarrassed in class because all the other kids are reading faster than him. He soon le learns that he can read at his own pace, enjoy the process, and not feel shame for reading differently. This book is based on the author's own experience with dyslexia. Granddad's Camper by Harry Woodgate, grades pre-K through two. Granddad's Camper is a sweet and loving story about a granddad telling his granddaughter about his past adventures with her grandfather, who has passed away. He talks about his camper, about how they explored so many beautiful places in the world together. This book is a result of the author's dissertation, which studied the lack of elderly LGBTQ characters in children's books. And now I'm going to pass it back to Jackie. All right, thank you, Lael. I'll share my slides one more time. All right, so now we have some science books. And I divided these into some subcategories. So we're gonna start with physical science. When Cloud Became a Cloud by Rob Hodgson, grades K through three. When the sun comes to warm a lake, some water droplets float into the sky and cloud is formed. In this informative book, cloud takes readers through the steps of the water cycle, introducing weather words such as snow, fog, rain, and thunder. Nano, the spectacular science of the very, very small by Dr. Jess Wade, illustrated by Melissa Castrione, grades one through five. Physicist Jess Wade introduces kids to the concepts of atoms and molecules and then explains nanotechnology. Children will be fascinated by the possibilities she mentions in the book. Lighter weight airplanes, windows that wash themselves, medicines that can be steered to the proper place in the body, and even filters with super tiny holes to make seawater drinkable. And the next section is books about engineering and technology. Galloping Gertie, the true story of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse by Amanda Abler, illustrated by Levi Hastings, grades two through four. When Dale was a little boy in 1940, he was excited to walk over the brand new Tacoma Narrows Bridge near his house. What he didn't know was that the bridge would collapse only a few months later during a windstorm. Notes at the end explain the engineering failures that led to the collapse. The Great Stink, How Joseph Bazalgette Solved London's Poop Pollution Problem by Colleen Path, illustrated by Nancy Carpenter, grades two through five. In 1858, the Thames River in London was full of poop. When the city was smaller, people had dug cesspools where they dumped their waste. There was something called a sewer, but its job was to carry rainwater to the river. As the population grew, cesspools filled up and some people connected theirs to the sewers. So now, along with rainwater flowing into the river, there was also poop, yuck. Some people drank water from the river and started getting sick. Joseph Bazalgett, who worked for the city, thought a new sewage system needed to be built to keep the poop out of the river. The problem was, no one else believed him. How could he convince the government to fund it? Make Way for Animals, A World of Wildlife Crossings by Meeg Pincus, illustrated by Bao Lu, grades K through three. All around the world, animals face problems when they have to cross roads to find food, mates, or shelter. People have helped by creating innovative wildlife crossings, such as bridges for badgers, pipelines for penguins, and underpasses for elephants. This book shares many examples of animal crossings as well as describing the roles of people in creating them. And then we have one book about the human body 
the how and wow of the human body from your tongue to your toes and all the guts in between by Mindy Thomas and Guy Raz, illustrated by Jack Teagle, grades four through eight. The hosts of the Wow in the World podcast take readers on a hilarious tour of the human body. In addition to learning how our bodies work, kids will also find the answers to burning questions like, which bone in your body is the strongest? How much spit does your body make over a lifetime? And who holds the world record for the longest ear hair? Life cycles. Anglerfish, the sea devil of the deep by Elaine M. Alexander, illustrated by Fiona Fogg, grades two through four. Thousands of feet under the ocean surface in the midnight zone lives the anglerfish who stealthily hunts her prey. She began her life as a tiny egg on the surface, hatched to become a baby fish, and escaped dangerous predators for three years until she was an adult. Once she grew her lighted lure, she descended into the deep, where she'll mate and continue the cycle. Begin with a bee by Liza Ketchum, Jacqueline Briggs Martin, and Phyllis Root, illustrated by Claudia McGee, grades pre-K through two. Beginning with a queen, rusty-patched bumblebee burrowed into a log during the winter, this book follows her life cycle as she finds a nesting site, lays eggs, and starts a new colony. The book concludes with steps humans can take to help bees. Dear Tree Frog by Joyce Sidman, illustrated by Diana Studica, grades pre-K through three. When a little girl moves to a new house, she discovers a tree frog outside and observes it through the seasons. The poems on each spread show the girl's growth over the course of the year and smaller text, both at the bottom and at the end of the book, provides factual information about tree frogs. Mushroom Rain by Laura K. Zimmerman, illustrated by Jamie Green, grades pre-K through three. Why do mushrooms appear and disappear? Did you know that some mushrooms smell like bubble gum? Some like maple syrup and some like rotten cabbage? And did you know they're more closely related to animals than to plants? You can also find out more about the humongous fungus in Eastern Oregon in the back matter of this book. Now we have some books about adaptations. Out of the Blue, How Animals Evolved from Prehistoric Seas by Elizabeth Shreve, illustrated by Fran Preston Gannon, grades one through four. This book begins with an intriguing question. Which two of these three animals, hippo, dolphin, and shark, are most closely related? Shreve then explains how life evolved on our planet, starting in the oceans and then moving to land in multiple eras. At the end of the book, readers find out that even though they don't live in the same environment, Hippos and dolphins are more closely related to each other than to sharks. Summertime Sleepers, Animals That Estivate by Melissa Stewart, illustrated by Sarah S. Brannon, grades K through three. You've probably heard about animals who hibernate in the winter, but what about those who estivate or sleep in the summertime? When the weather gets too hot or food may be in short supply, Animals like ladybugs, spotted turtles, leopard geckos, and yellow-bellied marmots find places to keep cool and rest until cooler temperatures arrive in the fall. The back matter includes more information about each animal. And now some books about ecosystems. The Tide Pool Waits by Candace Fleming, illustrated by Amy Heverin, grades K through three. The tide is out and the sun is warming the tide pool. The plants and animals who live there are waiting and hiding until the high tide returns. Then they hunt and feed and swim and sometimes fight until the tide goes out again. The lyrical text is accompanied by further information about each of the organisms in the back matter. Pando, a living wonder of trees by Kate Allen Fox, illustrated by Turin Tran 
grades K through two. A tiny seed grew into an aspen tree. Its roots wriggled underground, and when they found an open spot, another tree sprouted. That tree was a clone of the first. For thousands of years, the sprouts kept sprouting, forming an enormous grove of trees called Pando. It contains more than 47,000 trees, which is one of the largest organisms on Earth. Readers can also learn how humans are trying to protect Pando. The Dirt Book, Poems About Animals That Live Beneath Our Feet by David L. Harrison, illustrated by Kate Cosgrove, grades one through four. What is dirt made of? Where does it come from? This poetry book with an unusual vertical format, you can see the spine of the book, they're kind of right in the middle, answers these questions, as well as introducing 15 animals that live in the dirt. Some like earthworms, ants, and chipmunks will be familiar to young readers, but others like doodlebugs and gopher tortoises are lesser known. There's further information about each animal at the end of the book. The Secret Life of the Sea Otter by Lawrence Pringle, illustrated by Kate Garchinsky, grades K through three. Readers can follow a female California sea otter as she hunts, eats, grooms her fur, and escapes from a hungry great white shark. Later in the book, she raises her baby and survives a storm. The back matter discusses sea otter's importance as a keystone species of the kelp forest. Hello Puddle by Anita Sanchez, illustrated by Luisa Uribe, grades pre-K through two. The author was inspired to write this book by observing animals in a puddle in her driveway. It shows the variety of wildlife from toads to robins to snails to bats that live in or feed from the puddle throughout the seasons. The book concludes with more information about the animals and tips for creating your own puddle and watching wildlife. Environmental protection and climate change. The Last Straw, Kids Versus Plastics by Susan Hood, illustrated by Christiane Engel, grades K through three. After enumerating the many ways plastic is used, the author asks, is plastic a blessing or is it a curse? It makes our lives better, but could they get worse? The poems on the next pages show the problems plastic has created for the environment, as well as profiling kids who are working to make changes. The book concludes with notes on sources and the poetic forms that are used. How do we stop climate change by Tom Jackson, illustrated by Dragan Cordich, grades four through six. Organized like a mind map, this book starts with the basics. What's the difference between weather and climate and what causes climate change? Then the author explains its effect on the planet and looks at ways we can address the climate crisis from lifestyle changes to new energy sources. How to Change Everything, The Young Human's Guide to Protecting the Planet and Each Other by Naomi Klein with Rebecca Steffoff, grades five and up. Climbing temperatures, wildfires, and superstorms are all effects of climate change that we're experiencing. Well-known journalist and filmmaker Naomi Klein explains what led to our current climate crisis and how young people around the world are leading the movement for climate justice. Our Planet, There's No Place Like Earth by Stacey McAnulty, illustrated by David Litchfield, grades pre-K through two. Earth addresses her inhabitants in this book for young readers. She points out problems like flooding and extreme heat that are caused by climate change and then encourages readers to use clean energy and sustainable practices. She concludes with, there's no other place like me in the solar system and I need your help to stay awesome. Planet Ocean, Why We All Need a Healthy Ocean by Patricia Newman, photographs by Annie Crawley, grades five through eight. The author and photographer visited three ocean environments, the Coral Triangle, the Salish Sea, and the Arctic Ocean to see the effects of climate change firsthand, as well as to meet local people who are fighting to protect the oceans. 
QR codes on some of the spreads lead to videos on the publisher's website. Amara and the Bats by Emma Reynolds, grades one through three. Amara's favorite animals are bats, but when she moves to a new town, she's disappointed to find out that there are none roosting nearby. After learning about kids who are working to help the environment, she decides to enlist the help of her classmates in building bat boxes and creating a bat-friendly environment in a nearby park. And here's our last section on scientists and engineers. And since we're in our last section, I'm just going to remind people, if you have any questions and answers, questions, I guess, we'll provide answers if you have questions, and you can type them in the Q&A box. Hidden Powers. Lisa Meitner's Call to Science by Janine Atkins, grades five and up. This novel in verse tells the story of Lisa Meitner, a Jewish girl who was interested in physics long before women were accepted as scientists. Nazi Germany was a dangerous place, so she escaped to Sweden where her work led to the discovery of nuclear fission, although only her male partner was awarded a Nobel Prize. Who is a Scientist by Laura Gell grades K through three. This colorful book introduces 14 diverse scientists working in a variety of fields from engineering to neuroscience to paleontology. The text notes both what the scientists do on the job as well as what they enjoy outside their working hours. A QR code at the end leads to video introductions from the scientists. She Caught the Light, Williamina Stevens Fleming, astronomer by Katherine Lasky, illustrated by Juliana Sweeney, grades one through four. When Williamina Stevens Fleming's husband disappeared, the single mother became a maid in the home of the director of the Harvard College Observatory. Eventually, she was hired to study astronomical photographs to determine the composition of stars. Eventually, she classified more than 10,000 stars and even discovered the Horsehead Nebula. The Stuff Between the Stars, How Vera Rubin Discovered Most of the Universe by Sandra Nickel, illustrated by Amy Sikoro, grades two through six. When Vera Rubin was a little girl, she loved to look at the stars, but she also wondered about what was in between them. As she grew older and became an astronomer, she started to develop theories, but the male astronomers didn't want to take them seriously. After spending many hours looking through telescopes, Vera was able to prove that dark matter, the areas between the stars, is what makes up most of the universe. And this time, the other scientists believed her. A Life Electric, the story of Nikola Tesla by Azeda Westergaard, illustrated by Julia Sarda, grades one through three. As a child, Nikola Tesla loved playing with the animals on his family's farm in Serbia. He also loved inventing things. His greatest invention was a motor using alternating currents to distribute electricity, which remains the standard today. He also continued to love animals throughout his life and took care of sick and injured pigeons in New York City in his later years. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my slides now. And we can check our question and answer box and see if we have any questions and answers. I don't see that there are any currently in there. Um, we will wait another minute or two for people to type in any questions and answers if they would like, or any questions, I guess. Um, and um, we are also going to add into the chat um, a link to the evaluation for the webinar. So um, please fill that out because number one, it helps us to improve our workshops, but um, it also allows you to request your certificate of attendance if you need one. Um, we will email that to you within a couple of weeks. Um, I always like to say that they are produced by a real person um, our assistant, whose name is Brendan. So um, he, you know, it, it's usually a week or two before he's able to get them all out to you. And he says to please, there's a spot on the survey to put your email address. Please put the email address where you would like him to send the survey because that's where he will send it. 
Um, and then we'll also send you a separate email um, after this workshop um, that has a link to the survey. So if you miss it here, it's okay. Um, and we'll include all the links that we shared in the presentation, um, as well as the link to the YouTube channel channel where this will be posted, as well as that new spot in Niche Academy where um, it can be viewed to get um, credit with a certificate. Okay. Wait just a little bit longer. Just added the survey link in there. We'll check the Q&A one more time. All right, I'm not seeing anything else in there. So I think we can go ahead and say that we're done. Thank you everyone for attending today.